Hey there, gangsters of the Blender universe. Recently, I've been doing a lot of golfing and mini golfing, and I thought to myself, oh, I don't know how to actually model and make a realistic looking uh, golf or mini golf ball. I think they're the same thing, so I learned how to do it by just playing around in Blender, and here's a tutorial uh, that's gonna be useful to pretty much nobody. So, uh, when, when, you're in, when you're in Blender, I'm using 2.92, uh, you're gonna take the cube, delete it, and replace it with something that nobody ever uses, which is the Icosphere. Uh, normally, you don't see people using this, but but uh, it's actually gonna be very useful for us because it's basically a sphere uh, with the vertices distributed in a you know pretty useful way. So take this icosphere, go to the properties of the icosphere, the very fabric of its nature, and uh, take the subdivisions up, okay? Uh, just so it looks more spherical, but what we actually care about is uh, these vertice uh, distribution, vertex distributions. Um, one issue with this, by the way, is that you're gonna notice that there's a couple of like weird poles in the different areas that kind of break the pattern. Um, there's no avoiding that we're, we're just gonna live with it okay uh, so select all the vertices control B to bevel and we're not just gonna bevel uh, like this right first of all it looks like a mess right this is a uh uh, I don't know what this is. Either way, uh, we're not gonna do this. You're gonna hit C to clamp so it can't go past a certain bound so they don't go past each other, uh, the vertices. And second of all, uh, hit V for bevel mode. and this, Or not for bevel mode, for vertex mode, okay? Uh, this is gonna make it so that we're actually beveling the vertices instead of the edges, okay? Uh, take this, we're gonna drag up until we have a couple more, you know, uh, vertices or geometry to play with. P for profile, and then you just kind of drag it into a sphere. Uh, don't worry if you don't get it exact because you can just apply this um, and then like modify these settings here. So the shape is basically saying what's the profile gonna look like. Um, it can either be kind of like inverted like a star or you know, kind of uh, obtuse in a sense, uh, like a sphere. Um, and again, this does have the issue of like random uh, circles. I think there's five or six poles here that we don't want, uh, but it's, it's gonna be invisible in a bit. So um, modify that. Modify the width until they're barely touching. Uh, this looks pretty good. Um, and then uh, deselect, okay? Um, so you can see we have a bunch of circles here, which is kind of like the start uh, to our golf ball. Um, all we need to do is take those and kind of extrude or inset or just bring them inwards. So uh, the main issue is how, how the fuck are we gonna select all these, right? Am I gonna spend all day uh, doing this? This is like unpaid uh, manual labor. Not a fan of that. Uh, so here's the trick. You go to select, you go to uh, by trade, I believe, faces by sides, and this lets you uh, select faces uh, by how many edges or vertices they have. I guess number of vertices. So we're gonna select all of them with five, which are, are gonna be these weird uh, poles that we get every once in a while, okay? And then we are also going to uh, now uh, repeat this again. So, um, you know, apply that, and then go to select uh, by trait, faces, and then this time we're gonna suck by six. And make sure you have this set to extend, otherwise it's not gonna keep your previous selection, um, as you can see. So, uh, take that, control plus on the keyboard lets you grow the selection, and uh, we've done it, okay? So I'm just gonna turn these into n-gon, so dissolve faces, um, and then, I mean, I guess there's a couple ways to go about this. You could either, you know, do some extrude along uh, normals, but that's kinda like, it's a very simpy behavior. I don't know how it's simpy. It's, it's not a good strategy, okay? Uh, here's what I like. Inset it a bit, uh, just so we have a bit of a extra geometry here and it's not pulling everything else. We're gonna scale now, and it's gonna scale to the 3D cursor, really to the origin um, of this icosphere, which is the 3D cursor. So again, inset, and then we're gonna scale a little bit. Then we're gonna inset like one more time and scale it even more. Um, so this is just kind of like a convoluted way to do like an extrusion and a bevel, okay? Um, and you're thinking, okay, it looks pretty good from far away, but you know, it's, it's a bit off. Here's the trick. Make it shade smooth and immediately we'll start uh, looking like a mini golf golf ball. And uh, by the way, those poles from before become kind of invisible. Like they're still there. Uh, here you can see there's one of them. Uh, but when you zoom out, you can see really isn't a problem. So that, that just kind of goes away. Okay, so th that's the geometry, which is really kind of the brutal part. The rest of this is just a very simple shading. So I'm gonna make a ground plane for our little golf ball to be on. Um, and let's uh, pick some good render settings. I like cycles, I like GPU, and I like uh, having an HDRI. So let's do that. So I'm using cycles for that realistic, you know, ray tracing, all this nonsense, right? Um, apply that, and then we're gonna do an HDRI, which I get mine from HDRI Haven. Uh, you can also get yours from facebook.com and MySpace. I don't know, just download an HDRI, try to find the folder, and then just apply one. 
we're gonna make sure that we can't see it in the background. That's what the transparent does. And then finally, I'm gonna set our plane to be a shadow catcher. So it's still like reflecting light and shadows are still being cast. We just don't see it, okay? Uh, for the material of the actual mini golf ball, uh, nothing fancy, because usually these things come in one color, although you can make it more fancy, right? Um, so you just kind of pick a color, like green or blue or something that you normally see. I feel like we see a lot of whites and yellows. So I'm just gonna pick a yellow. Um, then for the roughness, in other words, the shininess, uh, you pick how shiny you want your thing to be. So it, it kind of depends on how much uh, dirt has been accumulated, etc. So uh, there's the roughness. Uh, speaking of dirt, uh, we could add in dirt very easily by just using a generated texture-based uh, noise. So it's going to be using generated coordinates, right? Um, so when we view this uh, noise texture, you can see it kind of makes a dirt pattern, which is kind of like an age-old trick. I'm just going to clamp this a little bit. Uh, just so there's more defined areas of where there is and isn't dirt. Add a, be a bit of detail and roughness, uh, just like that. And maybe maybe we can also invert this so the dirt is in the opposite area. So the way I want you to think about this is this is a mask where the uh, white areas, I guess, are where there's uh, going to be dirt, and black is where there isn't. And then just uh, to apply this, what you do is uh, first we need to manipulate the base color, like the color of this thing. So I'm just gonna make a mix uh, RGB. One of the slots is gonna have the color, the original color of our golf ball. And the other one is gonna have, I don't know, I mean, I guess it depends on your dirt, probably something kind of brownish uh, like that, okay? Uh, so it's gonna be overlaying using this as a factor that you can like soften and do a bunch of stuff to. I'm gonna soften it the other way, just so our dirt is a bit more diffuse. And then if you want it to have a uh, effect on the shininess, which it should, uh, we also need to do that. Okay, so add in another color ramp, uh, reset uh, this one. So this is just our uh, roughness and mask. So remember, uh, what is it? I think white, uh, we said, is where we're gonna actually have uh, dirt, and then otherwise we're not gonna have dirt. So in other words, where it's uh, white, um, you know, it should be white, and then where it's black, where we have the golf ball, we need our base roughness of point, uh, four, I guess, in this case, okay? So again, uh, this is basically just a manipulated uh, color ramp where the uh, wherever there's yellow, we're gonna have a roughness of 0.4, and then otherwise where it's brown, there's dirt, we're gonna have a roughness of one. Um, and you can see that looks uh, pretty good. Uh, if, if you wanna change the intensity of the dirt, you can uh, just by changing uh, this one slider. It's kinda like your dirt uh, slider. And you can also change the color and stuff like that, but just a bit of subtle uh, dirt never hurt anybody, except for uh, Dirty Harry. I feel like uh, my jokes today are uh, very cringe. They're, they're not good today. <laughs> um, okay, so we have this. Uh, let's make it a bit more procedural um, in the sense that I don't want to like necessarily pick a color each time I do this. I just want to pick four colors and it can randomly choose that uh, from the distribution every time I make a new golf ball, okay? Uh, to do this, we're gonna use a color ramp node to store our colors. So think about it like this, right? Uh, we're gonna have one handle with yellow, a second one with like, I don't know, green, create another handle in between, make that one like blue. We can also have like a white uh, golf ball saturation uh, zero. And you just wanna make sure these all have the same vibrance level. So 0.8, uh, I guess that one isn't 0.8. So make sure they're all the same. And again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as a kind of a sampling uh, that we can distribute colors from, okay? Uh, by the way, if your thing isn't, uh, you know, equally spaced out, there's a setting for that. It's called distribute stops uh, evenly, uh, just like that, and that'll separate them nicely. Also, you wanna set this to constant so that we don't have uh, any gradients in between. And just so that we get this green to actually show up, I'm just gonna slide this over here, create another handle at the corner, and then we're gonna distribute stops evenly again. So now we have four colors to choose from. Uh, so now I'm just gonna select or bring this over here instead of the yellow so we can actually choose. And then for the random uh, distribution, just object info, random. Uh, basically the way uh, random works is every object has a ID and that's gonna have a different like random value. Oh God, did I go above uh, the GPU uh, thing? Okay, be right back. I absolutely hate it when that happens. Okay, so anyways, uh, this random uh, value, basically what it does is for every object, it outputs a number between zero and one that's unique, uh, or it's not necessarily unique, but it is uh, randomly generated for each of these. I don't know why this uh, issue keeps happening. I hope my computer's not on its way out. I've been using the GPU more uh, recently because I've been messing around with some deep fakes. But either way, uh, the point was, you know, each of these is gonna get a random number. You take this, you connect it to the color ramp, which is basically uh, gonna fall somewhere on this uh, spectrum between zero and one, and that will, you know, sample one of these colors. And uh, there you go. Now you can see we have a blue one, and hopefully 
hopefully if we don't get a crash when I uh, duplicate this, you can see now we get a uh, green one. And, you know, at any point you can mess around with the distribution. So you can make your gr anything that would end up be, uh, being green. You could turn it into red or whatever. So uh, this is the basic uh, material system. I mean, most of this is just modeling is kind of the main insight and then lighting with HD rise and whatever. Um, but... I mean, I mean, there you go. There's a material, there's all that. So I'm going to make this uh, one file available on Patreon. I'm going to clean this up a bit and the material so you could download it from there. And what's this on the right? Is it a list of, I don't know, letters in the Hebrew alphabet? No, it's all uh, 660 some patrons. Uh, you guys are going to get access to this one file and also any other one file I've ever made. Uh, exclusive tutorials that I'm going to be making later this month. I have a cool idea for what I want to do uh, for this tutorial series uh, this month. Um, early access, stuff like this. Patreon exists. Check it out if you care. If you don't care, uh, you know, if you just showed up here to learn how to make a golf ball and you want to leave, then you could just do that. But uh, Patreon exists. Uh, I, I always put you guys into credits because, uh, you know, you, you've paid to be there. So <laughs> there you go. Hopefully you learned how to do a thing. See ya.